Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be making a full Fuse London style minimal house track from scratch. So if you want to hear the finished track, you can skip to the timestamp at the top of the description now. I'll give you a moment to do that. And yeah, so as usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff from this video in the description. And if you're patron on my Patreon, check there because they'll be available there shortly. And yeah, let's get started. So, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of these extra little things here. And we're going to go to, let's do 128 BPM. And I'm going to get a kick. So, I have a kick here prepared. And we're going to just put this in. Let's make a little one bar pattern with it. So, just four quarter notes. And then, we'll drag that out and make it eight bars. Cool. So then we can take that and I'll give it like a bit of drum bust to just kind of beef it up. And alright, sounds pretty cool. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to make a bass line. So I'm going to pull in analog and what we're going to make is just like a pretty sort of punchy, sort of fat, plucky bass. I'll show you what I mean here. Let's get a saw wave and a square wave. Like that. And then we'll get the amp envelope. We'll just set it like that for now. And then let's turn the filter down and we'll turn off the envelope on that. There we go. And then let's turn the envelope up a little bit on the filter. Cool, we can shorten the amplitude envelope. And alright, there we go. That sounds pretty good. I'm going to tweak it some more, but basically, we just want kind of like a nice, warm, deep bass pluck like this. So let's try and come up with a bass line here. That's a little bit dark. That sounds kind of cool. You can hear we're just trying to make something really syncopated and really groovy and kind of funky like this. And you also see all the 16th notes are swung here. So I just took them, like all of these ones, and just pushed them back a little bit. So that just kind of helps with the groove you know you can hear. That's what's giving it the swing. So if we turn that off, it's a lot more like straight. Cool, so let's copy that over. And we'll do, yeah, something like that. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Just added that one little note there where it jumps up an octave. This is sounding pretty groovy. So from here we can take the filter envelope. I'm going to work with it a little. Alright, yeah, that sounds good. You know, just trying to get, like, everything sounding, like, perfect. Like, you, you really want to try to dial in the filter envelope here. 
not just to be like a pluck, but to be a pluck that works really well with this particular bass and this particular bass line. Like, so that's kind of the goal there. So from there, we're going to add a bit of saturation to the bass. Sounds good. We're starting to clip a little. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. So let's side or not side chain, but let's put the kick and the bass in a group here. Um, and then we'll put a bit of processing on that group. Let's get a drum bus on there. So you can hear already the difference there. Let's get an EQ8. Awesome, sounds pretty good. Cool, so from here, I'm gonna make some type of a pad. I'm gonna actually grab a sample from one of these other videos of mine. But what we're gonna get is we're gonna get one of these choir samples. I'll show you. One of these. And we're going to put this in here. We're going to have it just kind of like as a pad. So let's go. Well, that sounds good. And then we're going to make a G minor 7 chord. I might go for a minor 9. Let's see. That sounds cool. Let's side chain it to the kick a little bit. That's going to be really important, I think, for the groove of this. And then I'm also going to go in here and turn on this loop. And we're going to just turn the length down and turn the start time up. And then we can turn up this fade. And so the fade is going to just make it like an endless thing like that. Where you can see it constantly keeps looping over. Cool. Let's try the minor 9. I want to see what that's going to sound like. Alright, sounds good. So you can do this. It's just kind of sitting on top of that kick and bass now. Just adding something a bit deeper. It also kind of helps to like contextualize the bass line and what I mean by this is this bass line is a very minor sounding bass line you know we're just going G the root up to the fifth down to the minor third it's gonna sound very like dark and minor and the thing is when you hear that on its own it might be a little bit too dark like it doesn't quite have like the smooth kind of feeling to it that you can get from a minor key and can get from a bass line like this but you need something like this pad to, like I said, sort of contextualize it. Like, when you hear the pad, you're still hearing the same bass line, but it's establishing it in your mind, like I said, more as like a smooth sort of minor key and less as like just a dark, sad sort of like minor key. Which I think is very important for the style of house. It's cool, that sounds pretty good. Let's get a chorus on there. And I'm also going to turn up that filter a little bit. Let's do it this way as well. Let's get an auto filter after the simpler. And what I'll do is I'm going to put the LFO on there. And then I'll just kind of be slowly moving like that. Yeah, that sounds good. that through some saturation awesome sounding pretty good so I'm gonna keep working on the groove here I have some some drum sounds that I want to bring in here once they load there we go so yeah we'll get like 
Let's do let's do the hi hat first. I'll just put in like this one. in there let's get some of these percussion sounds that I have as well we'll put those in the drum rack I think those are gonna really add a lot to the groove Awesome, that sounds pretty good. So you can hear the drum rack adding in some percussion like that. Just really like brings the groove to life. All right, so I'm gonna put the clap, or I just did put the clap and the percussion in a groove here. And we're gonna put a bit of processing on that. We're gonna get a saturator. There we go, and then a bit of EQ cutting out the low end. Awesome, that sounds good. And then let's get do a little bit more high hi-hat work here. Like we'll get this hi-hat, and we're just gonna add in some extra little hits with this one. Sounds cool. All right, so now I'm gonna try. I have basically with the hi hats here, we're gonna have kind of two different ones. I've done this a little bit in my other minimal videos, so you may recognize this technique if you've seen my other videos. But basically, what will happen a lot in these kind of tracks is there will be like a part where it's just this hi hat. And then it'll kind of go into this one. And usually this one's a little bit shorter, but you can hear. You can hear the difference there. So it's kind of a nice way to like up the energy at a certain point. So I'm trying to just get this one dialed in and then we'll have that for when the arrangement comes. To just throw in. So this sounds pretty good. I'm going to add one more thing in here and we're going to make a little shaker using operator. So what we're going to do is we're going to get operator, which is loading. 
And then we're going to just put in some 16th notes. So we'll just do like with a little bit of swing like we've been doing. Doesn't matter which note you put in. But then from there, we're going to go into operator here. And we're going to switch this to white noise. Which sounds great, as you can hear. But then we're going to turn the sustain down and turn the K down a little bit and turn the attack up. And you can hear we have a little shaker. Now, what we're going to do after that is we're going to put the, the white noise through a band pass. And you can hear now we have kind of a nice, like, shaker. Cool, so now I'm going to put all the hi-hats in a group together. And we're going to do some group processing. So you can see, I mean, I talk about this a lot in my videos, but you can see we're taking all the similar things and grouping them together. Like, we have all the percussion in a group, we have all of the hi-hats in a group, we have all the low in a group, and it's just a really good way to take those elements and make them more cohesive. So, let's get some a drum bus on here. And then we'll cut off the low end with an EQ8. Awesome, this sounds pretty good. So, this is sort of like the main groove. I think I want to add some sort of like a lead or something. Like, I don't know, just some kind of a little melody that can come in at a certain point. Like, I'll show you. Let's make something with Operator. I want to make kind of like a more FM sort of plucky sound. But what we're going to do is we're going to... So, we've got a sine wave here. Like I said, we're going to make this kind of plucky. Gotta turn up the release on this oscillator. But you know, we can just make like a kind of little FM block. And then I'll use that for now. We'll work with it a bit. But then we can take that and maybe write something like this. some chorus and a bit of saturation after everything Sounds good. Now let's try side chaining this to the kick. Yeah, we'll side chain that a little bit. And we'll get an EQ8 and cut out the non. Nice, 
Alright, so that's pretty good. Now, I'm gonna make one more layer here, and this is gonna be a drone. So, we're gonna get Operator, and we're gonna just make a long one note, just like a... One of those. We're gonna get the side chain on there, right off the bat. And then what we're gonna do, is we're gonna get some sine waves. Like, let's use three. We're gonna detune these a little. There we go. And then we're going to put that through a band pass. So you can hear now we have sort of like a high pad and a low pad like we have this one And then this high one on top of it And we can kind of play around with that dynamic in the track of it Cool sounding pretty good at this stage. Let's start arranging this so what I'm gonna do so I'm going to grab everything, we're going to hit control X, and then we're going to just paste it there. And what we're going to do, is we're going to turn off the automation lock, um, but we're going to just start with something. So I usually start with the kick, as you know, dance music, that tends to be how it goes. So let's take the kick and we're just going to drag it over to here. And then let's also grab that hi-hat, the one that we muted, that we put in first, this one. And put it there. So again, it's like I was saying. You start with the kind of smaller one, and then eventually we'll get to this louder one. But cool, sounds pretty good. Turn everything down a little as well. Cool, and then we'll start like this. Then we'll bring in the choir. Yeah, let's do that, and then we're gonna get a low pass. I know I already have the low pass on there that's like moving throughout the track, but we're gonna get another one, which is just like slowly bringing this in. Just like that. Cool, and then we'll have the clap come in there. All right, and then we'll have the percussion come in there. So again, we're just kind of slowly building up the arrangement here with everything. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on this automation lock here. And so I turned this off at the start. But basically what the automation lock is, is it locks the automation. So if we have it on and I duplicate this clip, you'll see it doesn't duplicate over the automation. If we turn it off, you'll see it does. So we want to turn that on because I'm going to duplicate over the pad here. Like that. And let's get the baseline and maybe just start, like, we won't have the whole thing. But we'll have, like, part of it playing. Let's change the color of that clip so we know it's different from the other one. Yeah, that's 
Christmas. And then maybe here is when like that main hi-hat will start coming in or will come in. Okay, cool. So you can see we just kind of filled out the break there. You know, pretty simple stuff. I mean, I just like to go through and just listen to it and just do like the most the most natural thing. That's really the best way to do the arrangement. If you sit there and try to think of it too much, it can really get uh, confusing. Cool. This is sounding nice. We got this little pad drone high end thing coming in there. So I'm gonna have a low pass filter. Just kind of slowly bring it in. And then it's also going to slowly bring it out here toward the end on this little break. And then maybe we'll get like... Yeah, there we go. Cool, and then also while we're working on the break here, I have this little snare. We can put that at the end there. That was kind of the idea behind that sample. And then maybe I will actually just get rid of the bass there, not sure. And then we'll also have the shaker come in there. So I was trying to hear what I wanted the hi-hats to do there. But what we're going to do is we're going to have the hi-hats just kind of go down with a low pass in this part. And then I'll make this little automation here so it goes all the way back up. 
And then we're gonna keep that shaker going into that part. Yeah, there we go. And then let's copy over all this stuff as well. And I like having that shaker kind of keep going there. Okay, so you saw with the lead there, I was just kind of taking the same MIDI from here, but I just made it a little bit different. Now it hits on that count, and the second time, one of the notes is missing. So yeah, you know, just kind of playing around with the arrangement of these different things. But cool, well, this is sounding pretty nice at this stage. Let's just do some extra kind of mixing stuff. I'm trying to kick up a little. So sounding pretty good. So at this stage, we're gonna master this track. So the first thing that we're gonna put on here is we are going to get an EQ8. And with this, I'm going to just make a bit of a low end boost, a bit of a high end boost. And then we're also gonna make a cut around, let's do it at 250 Hertz. So basically what we're doing here is we're getting a low end boost to make the low end more powerful, a high end boost to make the high end more powerful. So kind of like the two ends that you want to really like shine in the mix and then we're just cutting out the low mid range around yeah like right at 250 hertz like we had it a second ago and so here's without this and then with it so you can hear it really really brings the mix to life um and yeah and this is something that a lot of mastering engineers do like Again, you just, it's really just kind of like focusing in on the ranges that you really want to focus in on with the style. Like, again, like with dance music, you know, the bass and the high end are very important. The high end is where the hype is. The bass is where all the energy and the groove is. So by kind of, you know, making these a little bit louder in the mix, you're making the mix sound a bit more intense and a bit more powerful. And then also just kind of making that cut there to kind of like clean it up. You know, that really goes a long way. In terms of sort of like opening the mix up and removing muddiness. After this, we are going to add a bit of compression. So I've got this, I'm going to get the compressor here and we're going to turn off the makeup gain. And we're going to just turn this down a little bit here. We're also going to turn the attack up, which I'll talk about in a second.
And so you can hear the difference when I turn this off versus when I turn it on. This isn't the hardest compression. This isn't doing like a lot in terms of really flattening the mix out. It's just helping to even out the volume levels a little bit more. We're just compressing the peaks. You know, we're not going too crazy. We're just helping to kind of, again, get the volume levels more even. Like when people say that compression just squashes your mix out, it's doing that when you go too crazy with it. But on the most basic level, it's just evening out volume levels. So... If we just do a little bit of it like this, it goes a long way. And then I have the attack up there, so I talk about this a lot. But basically, the way this works is the attack is how long it takes for the compression to kick in. If you look at like a drum sound like this kick, for example, you can see we have what's called a transient at the start, which is like the little sort of attack. And then we have the body of the sound. If we turn up the attack on the compressor, we can keep it from compressing the transient and the kick and all of our different drum sounds. We'll still have a lot of punch to them. But we can still compress the body of the sound and still get that nice kind of more even mix. So, cool. Sounded pretty good. From there, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to just get a limiter and I'm going to turn this up. Until we hit 0 dB. Which we just did. So you can hear that just does that last little like volume boost and the reason why we're using the limiter here is just because the limiter catches it like you know if we use the utility for example it's doing the same thing it's just giving it a clean gain boost it's just like every now and then it'll go like a hair over zero db like that and so this is where the limiter comes in it just catches it so you can still get that maximized volume and like it's not so obvious and so like you know it's not just like Squash limited. Like you can still see some dynamics there. The green bar is still jumping. It's just if it does go slightly over like that, it'll catch it and we can get a louder mix this way. Cool, well, sounding pretty good. At this stage, let's hear the full track.
awesome. Well, sounds pretty cool. That is that is it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Once again, you get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff that you just heard and that we just made in this video in the description. So make sure to check there. And if you're raging on my Patreon, check there because they are already available and you can get it there. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much everybody and I will see you tomorrow with another video.